If the most frightening predator in the ancient ocean was not a shark, but a sea scorpion the size of a person just let that idea sink in. Hmm, yeah. Not a sleek silhouette with rows of teeth, but a jointed armored giant with claws ready to crush. For a long stretch of deep time, Jake Elopterus ruled parts of prehistoric waters so convincingly that even today it makes scientists stop and think. How did evolution build an arthropod that could reach about eight feet long, then leave us a world where nothing remotely like it patrols our coasts? Now take a breath and step back roughly 390 million years to the early Devonian. No whales, no dolphins, no modern coral cities. Coastlines and river mouths spill into wide estuaries and shallow seas often brackish and cloudy with silt and plant matter. Fish are everywhere, but they are still experimenting with what it means to be a fish. Some wear armor like living shields. Some are testing new jaws that will one day reshape the ocean. The water is a dim green world where shapes appear and vanish quickly, and being noticed is often the first step toward being eaten. And in that murk, something else is already acting like the owner. Meet Jacolopterus renanii, the largest arthropod known to have ever lived. It belongs to the Eurypterids, often nicknamed sea scorpions. Not true scorpions, but aquatic relatives of modern arachnids built from segments and jointed limbs adapted for swimming and hunting. And here is a twist that makes it even more unsettling. Many Eurypterids were not living out in the open ocean like a modern Great White. Many were at home in brackish or even freshwater settings, places where rivers meet the sea, where visibility is poor and ambush works beautifully. So if your brain is trying to file this under deep sea nightmare, gently correct it. This is more like a coastal nightmare. A single fossil claw from early Devonian rocks in Germany about 46 centimeters long let researchers estimate an animal around two and a half meters in body length. That is about eight feet, and it makes Jacolopterus the record holder. Not the biggest crab, not the biggest insect, the biggest arthropod period. And yes, sea scorpion sounds like the title of a cheap horror film. Ah. The difference is that this one came with receipts in stone. Jacolopterus was part of the pterygotids, a lineage built for active predation. Streamlined body, powerful swimming limbs, a tail segment that likely helped steer. It was not a slow bottom crawler waiting for leftovers. It was a hunter that could patrol, pivot, and launch into action. Now the claws. Eurypterid front appendages are called chelicerae, and in Jacolopterus they were the main event. Thick and muscular, armed with tooth-like projections that worked like built-in serrations. When the claw closed, those teeth helped grip and hold slippery prey, the way ridges on a tool stop something from sliding out. Imagine heavy-duty pliers with sharp teeth scaled up aimed at living animals. Jacolopterus did not need a fancy bite to be dangerous. It had a crushing grip. If Megalodon is the kitchen knife of the sea, Jacolopterus is the sledgehammer. Not subtle, but effective enough to make you flinch even when you know it is extinct. And here is a small, almost unfair detail. Evidence from damage patterns in related fossils suggests it did not always stop at convenient prey. If a smaller Eurypterid wandered too close, or a wounded fish slowed down, the menu could become very flexible very quickly. In other words, it was not just a predator, it was an opportunist, and opportunists tend to do very well. So how did it hunt? In murky water, ambush is king. Picture it low to the bottom, partly hidden in vegetation or soft sediment armor, blending into the background like drifting debris with bad intentions. Then a sudden surge claws snapping shut. Unlike many sharks that slice and let prey weaken, Jacolopterus likely clamped, pinned, and crushed. Hard-shelled animals like trilobites and other armored prey are not meals you nibble. You break them open. You turn them into manageable pieces. 
And if this were a cooking competition, Jacolopterus would not win for presentation, but it would absolutely win for best at tenderizing the ingredients. Of course, size and weapons mean nothing without movement. It is tempting to imagine a giant arthropod as slow and clumsy. Jacolopterus challenges that. Many Eurypterids had broad swimming appendages and pterygotids were especially capable in the water column. With a long segmented body, powerful paddle-like rear limbs, and a telson that likely acted as a rudder, it could swim with purpose and maneuver in confined habitats like estuaries and coastal shallows. Not a lumbering monster, but a fast-moving trap with armor. Ah, and that changes everything. It means Jackalopterus could do more than wait. It could choose positions. It could track movement. It could close distance. It could turn a cloudy shoreline into its personal hunting ground. Now widen the scene. The Devonian is often called the Age of Fishes, and it deserves the name. Jawed vertebrates were diversifying into new roles, including predators with stronger bites and better senses. Some fish were armored bruisers. Others were quick and agile. That creates an arms race. Prey evolves defenses. Predators evolve counters. Jacolopterus fits neatly into that story. A top-tier arthropod hunter, thriving while vertebrate predators are still rising. In a weird way, it is like arriving at a party early and discovering the most intimidating guest is not the famous celebrity everyone expects, but the quiet one in the corner who has already claimed the best spot and is not planning to move. Then comes the question that makes researchers pause. How did an arthropod get this large? On land, many arthropods are limited by breathing systems that do not scale well. But Eurypterids were aquatic and likely used gills or gill-like structures changing the constraints. The Devonian environment was also shifting, with oxygen levels rising toward near-modern values. Oxygen alone is not a magic wand, but combined with buoyancy in water, productive coastal habitats, and strong selection pressure from competitors and prey, it may have helped set the stage for gigantism. There is also something quietly elegant in the design. Segments allow specialization. Limbs become paddles, claws, or walking legs. Armor thickens where it matters. Sensory systems sharpen. Eurypterids had compound eyes built on design principles, still seen in living relatives like horseshoe crabs, hinting these were alert hunters, not blind brutes. So when you picture Jacolopterus, do not picture a clumsy antique. Picture an animal tuned by selection efficient in its environment, dangerous in a way that feels both ancient and strangely modern. And now the throne begins to wobble. Jacolopterus lived early in the Devonian, but Eurypterids did not rule forever. As the Devonian progressed, ecosystems shifted, and the late Devonian brought major extinction events that reshaped marine life. Eurypterids survived beyond that time, but their dominance declined as jawed fishes and other vertebrates expanded into more predatory roles. Over longer time, the ocean simply favored different kinds of giants, and the old kings faded into fossils. Yet the legacy remains. A predator like Jacolopterus reshapes an ecosystem by existing. Prey hides more. It changes roots. It evolves armor, speed, or new behaviors. Even scavengers adjust because a large hunter changes when and where food appears. In that sense, Jacolopterus was not just a monster. It was an architect of Devonian waters, forcing other creatures to evolve or vanish. So here is the takeaway as we surface back into the modern sea. We default to sharks when we imagine prehistoric terror because sharks are the surviving celebrities. But deep time is full of rulers that do not match our expectations. Jacolopterus was not a dinosaur, not a reptile, not a mammal. It was an arthropod, armored and powerful, with a crushing grip and the ability to swim like it owned the place. Ah, if it were alive today, it would not just dominate a documentary, it would rewrite how we think about what an apex predator can be. 
And if you are wondering what you would do if you met it in those Devonian shallows, you already know the honest answer. You would run. Or, if you are extremely brave and not at all responsible, you would consider reaching out to pet a claw that was designed to turn hard shells into lunch. Either way, the ancient sea scorpion has done its job. It has reminded us that the history of life is not a neat parade of familiar monsters. Sometimes the real rulers are the ones you did not even know to fear.